Hi there. In this video, what we're going to do is take all the knowledge we learned about derivatives and finding maximum and minimum points, and we're going to solve an optimization problem. In this particular problem, if you follow along the red, we're trying to find the optimal path to go from point A to point B by selecting a point along the shoreline so that we minimize the cost of laying the cable. And what we know is that every mile per Every mile on land costs $5,000, and every mile going underwater costs $8,000. And what we have is that the point A is two miles from the shoreline, and we're talking about a distance of eight feet or eight miles along the shoreline. So we're trying to find the optimal path. So let's just take a moment and just consider some easy paths just to see. So one path might be knowing that the water is the most expensive, one choice might be, well, why don't I go directly across the water and then directly down the shoreline? And while that might appear to be cost effective, the problem is it's a longer distance than any other distance we could ever find. You know, we're going the whole way across and then the whole way down. That's a total of 10 miles. So it could be the optimal path. It's just not clear. The other possible path is if we go directly from A to B. And while that is the shortest distance, the problem is it's also the most expensive as it, you know, when it comes to materials, 8,000 per mile, and we're using all of the distance underwater. So that could really drive the cost up. So what we do is we pick a point along the shoreline for the cable to stop, and then we don't go the rest of the way down the shoreline. Maybe that'll end up with an optimal solution. We'll see. And of course, the calculus will help us figure out where on the shoreline that should be. So looking at the two distances, we need distances in terms of X. Now, this straight line distance here, the horizontal distance, since the entire horizontal distance is eight, and we're saying X is the distance we're going from the left, that means this distance here is eight minus X. So that one wasn't too bad. The other one, the slanted distance, however, notice that that kind of makes a right triangle. Well, it does make a right triangle where one side is X, the other side is two, and the distance we want is the hypotenuse of that triangle. That we have to use Pythagorean theorem to get, and just setting it up, we know two squared plus X squared is equal to, I'm gonna call this side AC, because it's going from point A to point C. And if we solve for AC, we get the square root of x squared plus 4. So this side here is the square root of x squared plus 4. So when we formulate our cost function, we have to keep those two distances in mind. One distance is the square root of x squared plus 4, and that's going to cost us 8,000 per mile. So the total cost of that piece is 8,000 times the square root of x squared plus 4. The other piece is going to cost us 5,000 per mile, and we're going 8 minus x miles. There's our cost function. So now, here's an added bonus. We have a nice domain that we can find here, too. We know that because x is the location along the shoreline, I know that x cannot be any more than 8, and I know it can't be any less than 0. So that means we are finding the optimal value of a function on a closed interval. That means we can apply the extreme value theorem, which basically says if you have a continuous function on a closed interval, there is a minimum and there is a maximum guaranteed. So we're gonna utilize that instead of using the second derivative test this time. Okay, so we're ready to find the derivative and find the critical numbers, and then off we go. So first thing I need to do before taking the derivative is to rewrite the square root because we know we deal better when it's a one-half power. So that means C of X is 8,000 X squared plus four raised to the half plus, and I'm gonna go ahead and multiply the 5,000 through. So you have 40,000 minus 5,000 X, okay? So now we're ready to take the derivative. So C prime is, okay, so eight, so 8,000, times something with the power rule. So it's 8,000 times a half, which is 4,000, times the something to the negative half times the derivative of the inside. The derivative of 40,000 is zero, and the derivative of minus 5,000x 
is minus 5,000. And we're going to clean up the derivative first before we do anything else with it. So this is 8,000x times x squared plus 4 to the negative half minus 5,000. And I'm going to rewrite the negative 1 half power as dividing by the square root. Remember, that would be over the 1 half power, and then a 1 half power means square root. So you have 8,000x over square root x squared plus 4 minus 5,000. Now, remember that critical numbers occur when the derivative is either equal to 0 or is undefined. And you might be thinking, this is undefined because there's a denominator here. But remember, that denominator is x squared plus 4. There is no value of x that makes that 0. x squared is non-negative, and adding 4 just means my denominator is always at least 4, never 0. So I'm going to set the derivative equal to 0 in hopes of finding a critical number. So what we'll do, we'll isolate the x terms to one side. So I'm going to add 5,000 to both sides. So you have 8,000x over the square root equals 5,000. And I'm going to go ahead and multiply both sides by the square root. So that means we have 8,000x equals 5,000 square root x squared plus 4. And right away, I notice both sides have a common factor of 1,000. So I'm going to divide both sides by 1,000 right away. That's going to go a long way in making our computations much easier. So you have 8x equals 5 square root x squared plus 4. And now to solve for x, this is an old trick. You might remember from your algebra experience, we're going to square both sides. And after squaring both sides, let's see what we end up with here. So this is 64x squared equals 5 squared is 25, and the square root squared is just what's under the radical. So we have that. Going to distribute the 25. And then subtract 25x squared from both sides. That means we have 39x squared equals 100, which means x squared is equal to 100 over 39. Kind of a weird number there. So that means x is equal to, now normally it's plus and minus, but we know in this problem, we're only dealing with positives. x is a distance. So it's the square root of 100 over 39, which oddly enough is just very close to 1.6. So that number is on our interval, so it does need to be checked. So we substitute 1.6 into the cost function. We substitute 0 and 8 because those were the endpoints. And here is the analysis. So when x equals 0, meaning we're going straight across the river and then 8 miles down, the total cost is $56,000. At 1.6, the total cost is $52,490. And at 8, with that, and that would be corresponding to going directly across the river from point A to point B, the slanted distance. It turns out that is the most costly. It's almost $66,000. So the minimum cost occurs when X is equal to 1.6 and a minimum cost of 52490